When designing systems, especially in interviews, we tend to put in a lot of things, which just makes things complicated and we put those things in the name of scale. Today we will talk about such a story where levels.fyi scale to millions of users without even a database and by just using Google Sheets. Levels.fyi is a site which lists average salaries of various companies so that professionals can make a better choice when going to a new company. At the onset, they knew that building a backend would be expensive and time consuming. They didn't want to risk sinking all the resources into something that might not even resonate with the target audience that they wanted. So what did they do? They went back to basics and stripped away all the bells and whistles. So no fancy UI, no complex databases. Their version 0 was just a Google form where people could add their salaries and all would be collected in a Google form. This allowed them to focus on what mattered like perfecting their idea and gathering feedback from users. Then let's look at the next version. This is also very interesting because this iteration is also using Google Sheets to store all their data. This will show you that you don't actually need fancy databases and complex infrastructure to get started on many projects. Okay, so now this is their architecture. They would have now have a custom UI hosted on levels.fyi and with that they would call the AWS API gateway, which in turn would invoke a AWS Lambda. Now, lambdas are like serverless cloud functions that AWS offers. This Lambda would update the Google Sheets. Very simple, the data basically goes to Google Sheets and they are using this Google Sheets as a data store and as a database. But now they needed to show all this data to the users, right? They also wanted to create um, like visualizations like this, which would show the salary ranges. Let's see how they did this. So this is the read flow they had and it is interesting that how much can be done with a dumb data store, right? So they had a Lambda function which would fetch the salaries from the Google Sheet and it would build JSON files out of it, right? and then it would upload it to a S3 bucket. So whenever now the browser wants data, it would request this CDN and all the files would be cached in the CDN and it would fetch the JSON file. If the file is not cached in the CDN, which means a cache miss, then it would again go to the S3 bucket and it would take the read the data from the S3 bucket directly and it would cache it in the CDN, right? Um, they would also cache the data in the browser itself, in the browser cache. So there was basically two layers of caching before this S3 bucket. You know, actually the full raw JSON was downloaded to the browser. All the data, like all the data that levels.fyi had, and then all the calculations would be done in the browser itself. This actually worked. I mean, I don't know how it worked for uh, as long as it did, but it did and this must have slowed down the page load time a little bit, but it must have been acceptable. All this crappy Google Sheets architecture actually went on for two years, after which they actually decided to move on to an actual database. See, obviously their initial page load time was started to getting out of hand uh, because as the data grew, there was just more data to download to the browser. Even the Lambda function started to time out. One more reason is that they wanted to query the data using SQL for some analytics that they wanted to do. There was also the problem that the Google Sheets API was kind of throttling them now because of the scale, because they were too frequently requesting that Google Sheets API to let's say add some data or read some data, right? So the Google Sheet got actually throttled. The last problem that they mentioned that is that all the data was coming in the front end as JSON. So it was being scraped and it was being plagiarized. Now they started to move their infra from AWS Lambda to Google Sheets and API servers and databases, you know, like normies like us. During the migration, they started by duplicating the rights to both Google Sheets and the database. So they didn't want to lose any data. The data was consistent among both of them. The next step was to split the JSON into multiple files and they also had a new read API which would read data from their database. The data that they put in the database was actually deprecated from S3. So for those, this new read APIs would be used. So you are seeing step by step, they're actually migrating everything from Google Sheets and S3 and all those things to a new API server and database based thing. And when all the data stored in S3 was deprecated, they would move everything to the new uh, read APIs and they would be contacting the real proper database, right? So you see, for eventually they had to move to a real database because that is what it is demanded in scale. But 
till scale is not there you can actually get away with a lot of scrappy technologies which will actually save your cost and not have some super expensive cloud bills this story is kind of a gospel in avoiding premature optimization and they have said that uh, they still have a service one of their most uh, traffic services which is run by one single node js server and they do 60000 requests per hour so this was all for today do leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more engineering breakdowns like this see you in the next video bye